Hello, welcome to the Stubborn Tortoise Podcast. I'm Donna Pazdera. So today's episode is a Paz and Hundo one, uh, where we talk to you about how to dress for the cold weather. And I know people in Colorado and other places will scoff, <laughs> go right ahead. Um, but here in South Texas, things are, it's humid and cold, okay? And so it's not like that dry cold. Um, sorry, I've got like this, there we go, that's better. <laughs> The time of day when I record this on Sundays is usually like between three and four and the, the sun's coming in like through my Venetian blinds and like a really weird angle. And so I end up looking like zebra woman. Uh, but anyway, um, so without further ado, here is Paz and Hondo talking about cold weather dressing. And we are live with Paz and Hondo in the house. <laughs> It's that time again. We're here. Um, and uh, so how, how are things going with, uh, down there in the valley with the weather and everything? Well, you know, it's uh, 85 one day, 45 the next. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can, I can kind of get behind that. Yeah. Well, we don't so, quite get that hot. But. So we had that nice little freeze the last couple of nights. And then uh, today it's like 70 something degrees. And then tonight's supposed to rain and get cold again. I don't know. Yeah, this was this was almost worse than last year um, in that uh, it was uh, it froze more. I just felt like we have more ice um, because like the outdoor cats, <laughs> all of their water that I put out for them that froze. And then I had, I was dripping water from my outdoor faucet and it was like a giant upside down icicle. God. So, and then my um, <clears throat> HVAC fan, you know, that big fan thing, um, trying to get a plate. There we go. I know I don't look like I'm some weird lighting thing. Um, but uh, that thing got some ice in it. And so it was like five o'clock in the morning on Thursday. Um, I think it was Thursday. Yeah, Daniel was just getting up and I was, up for some reason and uh i could hear this eh, eh, and i'm like oh no and it was pouring rain and it was you know below freezing so i was just like oh, oh i know what this is so I had to switch on the old emergency heat so mm -hmm. i think i've got that but it finally this morning i was able to um turn that off and use the regular fan but oh, <laughs> it's oh. I don't know about this. Yeah, I'm I'm looking into getting insulation for my house because I think I need it. <laughs> yeah. So, well, with the um, cold and the you know, I'm not getting any younger. So you know, today's topic: wearing uh, specific clothing for running in the cold and the I guess the rain and the ice and the sleet. I and I the humidity can, and the humid and I can't. I don't know if I can do it anymore. Not not ultras. Oh. Oh, uh, no, I, I, you know, it was, it took pretty much everything in me to run yesterday. I mean, I have not run all week and, um, I've been using my indoor bike and, um, yeah. And I mean, I had, I wore a hat, <laughs> it was bad, uh, so, but we've, we've mustered this sort of thing before. I don't know how, I don't know. Maybe it was cause we were younger. I don't know. I don't know. It's like, uh, like every year that I'm getting older, it's not like a slow progression of losing that ability to tolerate, right? It's like more of a geometric progression. Like it's like really, oh, I can't stand the cold anymore. I know. I yeah, I feel the same way because it's it's like, you know, when I was I was talking to Daniel about this, it's like I'm you know when I was a kid I used to enjoy the cold weather and the snow, but yeah, as I've gotten older, it's just like. And I realized we don't live, you know, in a place where it's that cold for that long, you know. Um, well, somebody was telling me, and uh, not the only person that has ever told me this, but it seems like when it gets cold in deep south Texas with our humidity, that our cold is colder than up north cold. I don't know if that makes any sense because you're from <laughs> Ohio. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. Um, actually, I would say Gainesville, Florida was probably the coldest place I've ever lived um, because... It was, you know, I mean, it's a little higher up on the, um, what do you call it, the latitude? Latitude. Yeah. And um, yeah, it, it just, <laughs> um, yeah, it was just, 
bone chill. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it can get pretty bad here. I mean, it's like, yeah, we've got palm trees, people. I mean, you know, this is stupid. Um, but yeah, I guess, I guess like Florida never really gets cold period. So for it to get freezing cold, you know, it's super cold. I had, well, two of the places I lived in Florida had, uh, fireplaces and I did have to use those. So, wow. Yeah. Like the first year I, I moved there, which was 89. Um, yeah, I lived, well, no, I lived in an old apartment building for a while. And then I moved into a house, um, that I shared with somebody and we had a wood burning fireplace and it, <laughs> the, yeah, that, that winter, it was just like it snowed in Jacksonville and, uh, yeah. And so they called that the, you know, the 89 freeze or whatever. And I was just Ugh. like, yeah, you know, and I can just remember, you know, building a fire and sleeping next to him. Because, you, know, you don't, I mean, the houses aren't insulated. It's like my house, you know, it's right. not built for the, that kind of cold, you know, or sustained mm-hmm. cold. So it's, and I realized it was only, you know, it was only for a few days, but it just feels like it's going to be the end of the world. So, and unless it's a race, I really don't want to be out in it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess, you know, just uh, moving, running, walking, crawling out there in the cold, I guess, while you're doing that, you're expending enough energy to warm you up some and you don't necessarily feel it. Because I know that when I see the the uh, volunteers at the aid stations, they seem like, man, they're battening down for for super cold. And you're like, y'all have jackets on and you're cold. And I'm like, in a oh, shirt it's worse to cold. stand there in it. No, yeah, it's terrible. That's what I figure. Yeah, having done that last year at Bandera. Yeah, we got a heater too. So I mean, um, but yeah, it, it that yeah, because my hat's off to people that you know volunteer or crew for people in these really cold races, because it's like you're at least, you know, the runner is at least moving, you know, and you know, but you still can get hypothermic. Um, you know, as our friend Jeff did uh, at Rocky Raccoon and, um, you know, decided that <laughs> that was it. <laughs> um, yeah, enough is enough. Yeah, no, and I, I, I mean, I was thinking about that because it's like, you know, you're out there and it's cold, but it's damp too. And so I think that really, you know, I know people that live in Colorado and stuff probably don't understand this at all, um, but it's a, <laughs> it's a different bird, you know, or something yeah and and unless you're going in it for a ticket to western states or you're trying to win i don't think any race health wise is is worth jeopardizing your health to finish no hot we're not we're not professionals so we're sponsored yeah right yeah so uh we don't have any obligations really yeah it's not worth it I know, but I'll tell you what, I love those people that are out there like in the uh, arm warmers and sleeveless and the little shorty shorts. <laughs> I'm like, woo! No, I can't no do good. it. I, I see them. I see them and I, I just don't believe it. I can't. <laughs> yeah. That's the funny thing about the, the cold weather races here, though, because it's like you will see people, you know, babush get out like, you know, <laughs> to the point where they can barely move, you know, and then there are, you know, the the crazy ones that dress like it's summer no matter what and then um you know and then you kind of have the people in between that are sort of like us you know that you know attempt to you know deal with yeah like like stay in running clothes right like modern running clothes it's hard it's hard uh you're in that middle ground you're not fast you're not slow but you're somewhere in there and how do i try and look like a runner but i'm be able to move yeah, and I'm still freezing, so I need I need layers. Yeah, and I think the first mile or so is probably the the bellwether because it's like if you can get through that, you know, because again I see all these people who are, you know, whipping off their giant coats and gloves and hats and stuff, you know, after a mile, and it's just sort of like if you can just kind of weather that, haha, um, you can, uh, you know, get through that uh, the race pretty well. I mean, at least in my experience. Um, training runs are another thing <laughs> hmm. so, so what, are, what are your secrets uh to to running in in this cold <laughs> so again we've we've said this on several episodes that you and i are both heavy sweaters like we sweat a lot a lot even if it's cold we're sweating so whatever race i'm doing i'm looking at okay where can i have a drop-off bag right or how far away can i be to where i can change clothes even in the cold, because I'm going to sweat. It's 30 degrees. I'm going to still sweat. 
Oh, yeah. So like you said at the beginning, I've got, you know, two or three low, uh, kind of loose jackets on just to stay warm at the beginning. Then you start running. Of course, it gets hot on you. So you're taking off jackets, opening zippers, you know, zipping down to get air, air flow in there. And then, of course, that's already getting sweaty. So then how soon can I be where I can take off this wet jacket, put on a, a dry one? Yeah. So depending on the race, that'll de- dictate how many times I'll feel like I need to change. And if it's a long wait, plus, you know, I'm going to be stuck with wet, a wet shirt underneath for a while. But like you said, once you get going and you're moving, you almost like forget about the cold. Uh, your body doesn't send those signals to your brain anymore. That's freezing cold. And you just keep moving until you get to an aid station or you stop someplace. And then all that heat just whoop leaves your body and then the wind hits you like oh get Ooh. moving again i know uh that happened to me cactus 2020 uh running good taking off the jacket putting on the jacket taking it off putting it on and then get to an aid station sit down and then start to shivering right like mm-hmm. that's like that's my signal get up and get out of there because you're you're hanging around too long and you're starting to get cold so then you put everything back on start running again and then take it back off again after about half a mile yeah it's it's a real weird balance you know to try to you know figure out yeah. where to leave things and i mean like you on. like you mentioned earlier i wish i was like these fast guys that are wearing a tank top and shorty shorts even in 20 degree weather and they don't seem to have any problem at all well, but yeah. i guess since they're moving so fast they're burning so much energy that they don't feel it <laughs> or they choose not to <laughs> or or they got some kind of pain threshold i don't have I know. That's just I don't, bottom line. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think I mentioned this the last time we talked, but I think my secret weapon is just to, to do the layers. And again, I know everybody you know, says dress on layers, but it's really true. And, um, you know, I, I like to, gosh, darn it. I should have brought them with me. <laughs> Dag on it. I was going to use visual aids. Um, but yeah, I, I use these little Janji tanks and um, maybe I'll insert a picture of one or something i don't know <laughs> or put a link to one and there you a little go. cutaway <laughs> yeah <laughs> really don't want to edit too much but um <laughs> but i like the sleeveless janji uh again for me it's not uh, a particularly form-fitting uh sleeveless tank but it's um it's very lightweight and um and i like that it's not sticking to me because you know when, mm-hmm. when stuff starts sticking to you then it's like Ugh. um and then i wear a short sleeve tech shirt and then I wear a long sleeve tech shirt. And then depending on, you know, <clears throat> like Bandera, you know, that one year that it was like 30 degrees or whatever, um, you know, I wore like a raincoat or something, if you will. And I had some fingerless gloves that you could flip over and make into mittens, you know, um, you know, that, that kind of helps. I wear a hat, like a little snow hat. God, I don't have that around either. I was not prepared. Um, on the bottom though, I wear a pair of long tights, okay, uh, that reach all the way to your ankles. And then I wear a pair of short tights. Um, and that's, that keeps you pretty warm. And then usually I will wear um, a pair of like thin long socks and then another pair of heavier socks with my shoes. And that's, <laughs> that's what's gotten me through, uh, you know, some you know, pretty arduous, you know, 50 Ks and um, the whatnot. Yeah. Mm. Light. Um, anyway, <laughs> I look like a zebra, you know, and, <clears throat> and then I can't get, can't get my mouth to the microphone. Or, yeah. We need, we need to get you some studio lights. You and it, well, I've got, I've got this thing, but it doesn't work. Really, yeah. No, you need my some. Ikea special. Yeah, I know. I, I do have a <laughs> halo light around here somewhere. I don't know where it is, but Oh, well, anyway, so you're going to have to deal with Donna the zebra tonight. Uh, or today. <laughs> yeah, so, so yeah, that sounds about right. Three, about three shirts, mm-hmm. then, a, then a, a small jacket or two. And then that's kind of what I do. I have a, like, these are my to go uh, Under Armour tech tees. Mm-hmm. So these tend to be so far the shirts that work for me the best. And then over this, like you said, a long sleeve tech tee. And then, uh, like a, a jacket or a hoodie, mm-hmm. you know, and then like you start going and you're going to take that off. So I'll either uh, Carlton it tied around my neck and hold it there or around my waist <laughs> until I start getting cold again. And I'll throw it back on and then take it back off. And then of course the hat and 
above yeah. for something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, again, I think just being able to move is very important. Um, you know, so you don't want to like, you know, get yourself so immobilized that you're not able to travel because that's, you know, I mean, that's fine if you're a spectator or you're working in an aid station or something, but, you know, um, to, uh, you know, to be out there in it, I think, yeah. So, um, are there any particular, I, you know, I know I, I mentioned the Janji, you, you like Under Armour, are there other brands Under Armour. that you like? Uh, Under Armour's good. Of course, everything is by feel. So as a, as a rookie out there running in the cold, you're going to have to figure out what works best for you, just like we do in the heat, what, yeah. what works best for you. So you have obviously Under Armour, Nike, Adidas, everybody has a tech, you know, nylon, polyester blend. Mm -hmm. And you just got to find the one that works for you and your body the best based on how, how you sweat and all that. And how, know, just how uh, you like the fit. Yeah. Yeah. How do you, how does it feel against your skin as you're running? And then how many miles? If you're doing a short run, nothing, you know, nothing will bother you, but you start getting into the 10 plus 20 plus 30 plus and any little motion, you know, in here, yeah, that's it's going to rub on you and then you start getting burns and stuff. So it all depends on what, what works for your body. Yeah, but I know. I know. I've been kind of interested in buying some Vori, V U O R I, shirts and oh, shorts. Don't they make glasses too? They make like a lot of stuff, but I know, uh, man, their shirts. They, I mean, to the hand, they feel real nice. Yeah, now, they are. They are pricey. Uh, they're expensive, and so are the shorts. But I'm I'm willing to uh, maybe try a pair or two and see see how they yeah. work. Yeah. Okay. I know great. that uh, Thomas Orff. Uh-huh. He uh, just took third in Rocky Raccoon. I mean, that guy's amazing. Yeah. And uh, I know that he wears uh, Viore shorts for sure. And I think also the tops, but Ooh. he does wear Viore shorts. And he's a firm uh, advocate of those. That's but good. They are, they're pricey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Try to look at the brands that I, well, I mean, for tights, it's usually Nike. I mean, I'll, tell, I'll be honest with you. I've got a couple of pair of um, old Navy um, tights. And I know a lot of people would scoff at old Navy, but their, their uh, performance gear is actually pretty nice. It's kind of like that, what they call that laser cut or something, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's really nice. And um, I like it. And uh, there's a, I mean, Lululemon's great, but it's very expensive and I, personally can't justify spending all that money um yeah. you know for that i mean well, that's just me but um i'll blow my money on other things but, you know. yeah i know kathy has a couple of lululemon uh, she's got a lululemon jacket and some tights mm. and stuff and i mean they they work real well oh yeah uh, and i guess you know depending how many times you're going to wear it right would probably be the the main deciding factor yeah, to, I, I think that's that. very, very true because I think, you know, I know sometimes, you know, we've talked about this before and people, you know, kind of scoff at you like, why did you spend all that money on, you know, X? And I'm just like, well, <laughs> kind of like it, you know, and I wear it like several times a week, you know, for many years. Why not? You know? Yeah. Oh, another brand I really like a lot, um, especially for their uh, tops. I do have a few pairs of, ugh, a few pairs of their shorts um, is Rabbit. Uh, yes. Running rabbit. Oh, that's rabbit's good. Nice. Yeah, I like it. That's a California uh, brand, and uh, yeah, they they just I don't know. They've got a good vibe. They uh, also make these um, plaid. For those of you who are into plaid, uh, sleeveless uh, uh, button up uh, tanks for summer. I, wow. Yeah, and I bought one. Yeah, I wore those. You've, you've probably seen those. A I've button got a up. Yeah, it buttons up. It's uh, like kind of a snap. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then I, um, yeah, so I've got a red plaid and a blue plaid, and they're pretty cool. Um, but I also recently bought one of their um, performance flannel long sleeve shirts. Um, Ooh. It's cute. It's nice. But to be really honest, I don't really like it. And I think I'm going to sell it on eBay. <laughs> I just don't, I don't know. I just didn't like the way it fit particularly. It felt yeah. like it was a little too... Uh, too snug a little too snug and it's my usual size so it could just be how it's cut you know because i know sometimes you can you know wear the same size and different you know the same brand of whatever and you know it just depends on how it's you know uh, styled or whatever but yeah so i just i wasn't real 
Exactly. Although I will say this, the nice thing about those is that you can wear them, you know, to breakfast afterward if you're not a side of mess, you know, or something. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, we we're, the, we're always a sodden mess you and i, I was gonna say, yeah that's not going to be the case yes. <laughs> <laughs> forget it yeah, but, uh, i'll tell you one secret that i've kind of done before uh you know find an expensive item look at the tag what's the percentage of polyester to rayon hmm. if it's uh you know like 87 13 then find a cheaper one that has the same percentage and use that that's a good idea. I never thought the about same that. fabric. Now, like we said, the cut might be a little different. So, but I mean, do your research. Look at the the product percentage of polyester to rayon to That's spandex. A really good tip. Yeah. And I and if you that. like that particular blend, and you know, look at other brands and see if they have one that's similar, and then try mm -hmm. that. Well, I know like Academy's got that BCBG or BCG. Yeah, BCG brand. Um, I still haven't really warmed up to that one yet, but. Yeah, but they, they might have, I mean, some of their stuff is pretty nice. Um, I just worry about the fabric not being the same quality as like, you know, something more expensive, but right. I'll have to go check into that though. Maybe I'm just being prejudicial. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, trying to think, socks in cold, um, darn tough. Darn tough. Uh, oh God. Uh, yeah, I've used darn tough. <laughs> uh, I got some darn tough on right now. I don't think hey, I can bend that's my. That's what I was showing my arm for. I don't think I can bend my leg like Woo! you can. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh my hip! Become contortionist. <laughs> oh my hip! That hurt. <laughs> We're just become like, injured trying to show our stuff. You're lucky uh, my body didn't make a noise while trying to bend like that. Save well, your I'm audience, gonna... save your yeah. audience some humor there. Uh, woo. Uh, yeah, so darn tough. I used the Baliga, oh, uh, yeah. blister, blister resist Baligas also. That's mm -hmm. pretty good for the cold. What's that? Oh, Smart Wool. Smart Wool. Smart Wool's got some really nice thin trail socks that are just like mm. crew. And um, I've got a few pairs of those and I really like them. Um, I like them for layering, um, especially if you're you know going to be in you know kind of a, a longer our <laughs> event <laughs> uh, you know but uh, and they're cute <laughs> so yeah you don't want to go out there looking like a door coming <laughs> i'm not really you know uh one of my friends said running gloves have you ever dealt with those or wore those running gloves mm -hmm. i used uh what did I, what did i use in the cold cold i think it's also i, I found some under armor mm -hmm. kind of just like skiing gloves but with fingers you know thin. yeah they'll work those work pretty good uh you don't want too thin i guess because then you your hands are still cold yeah but uh, it's all tolerance after a while you're taking them off like my hands are hot yeah so that also reminds me if you are in one of these long distance things like the <clears throat> brazos ben 50 Oof. um a few years ago uh you know or bandera um Get those daggone hand warmers that you know you can find at walmart academy and um you know put those babies in your gloves and that will keep your hands warm for hours and um you know they're they're fairly cheap and yeah i think i've mentioned this before i've also put them in my shoes because my feet were so cold and wet that i was like i gotta do something <laughs> yeah because anymore all our running shoes have a very thin upper right so real breathable so when it's cold and wet and you know water gets in there cold air gets in real easy yeah makes sense yeah makes a lot of sense Ugh. next time we do this i swear i'm going to figure out how to maybe maybe by the time change maybe the, the light won't be coming in at this weird <laughs> angle because i just recorded i just recorded um a podcast episode with one of my ex-students and we did this like i don't know maybe an hour and a half ago and i didn't have this problem it's only like at three o'clock so i Maybe I need to rethink my time. Or yeah, let's look at the time and where that sun's not right at that angle. Yeah, I know. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> Just when we <laughs> went to video. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> like, We're learning. Hi, the Venetian blind person. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think. Yeah, you know, as far as hats go, I just, you know, like uh, like wool blend or, you know, something like that. I don't yeah, know. Any, any hat's going to do. Uh, 
you know, we're sweating. So I'm going to sweat through those pretty good, get them wet with sweat. So I'm switching those out as often as I can too. Yeah. I tend not to do that. I, I, t I have just like one <laughs> that I've been you know in my repertoire, but I did get a couple of um, hand knit uh, caps, uh, at Christmas time, and they're mm. pretty nice. So, I mean, I haven't really test driven them yet, but they they look like they'd be appropriate for this. So that's a good one. Right. Um, I think for me, it's uh, kind of the combination of warm but also breathable. Well, yeah, that's the thing because you don't want something that's like gonna. You know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to get that combination just right, but <laughs> yeah. we should create our sportswear line or something. Yeah, right. something, man, something. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what else is uh, important. Um, so socks, shoes, uh, tights, shorts, layering. Uh, again, looking at fabrics and, and what works best for you in your training is going to be what you use in your race, right? Uh, knowing, knowing how you use materials in specific conditions is going to be important. Yeah, I'm sorry. My neighbor has this VW bug and he likes to take it out on weekends and that just was the <laughs> <laughs> roaring by and like, thanks, appreciate it. Um, <laughs> this is a bit of the nitty gritty, but uh, the needy gritty. Um, but people don't wear underpants with tights. Underpants with tights. No. No underwear with tights? No. No? Mm -mm, I don't. What about Maybe dudes? That was TMI. Huh? What about dudes? I don't know. I don't think. I, I don't think if I have. If I have to wear tights, if it's that cold, I'm wearing underwear under the tights, but I'm wearing a pair of shorts over the tights just, okay, to, that's be, all right. just to be discreet. Right. No, I get that. Yeah, because you don't want to have everything. I know, think most floor. guys, if they're going to wear because I've seen. Uh, you know, forgive me, but I've seen a guy, I think, <laughs> I, I don't forget which race it was, but he was wearing white tights, no underwear. Oh, so no, I, that's all so bad. I, come on, bro. Really? And uh, yeah, so that's I'm glad I missed that. That's like, bro, please, please. Well, yeah, well, and the same goes for shorts. I mean, you know, I, I don't know. I guess it's all uh being, i'm probably being, just sharing way too much information <laughs> yeah probably being aware of who's around you and what kind of race it is and all that kind of stuff right like trial runners after a while people don't care uh, yeah, um, exactly exactly i mean i don't know it's just the only advantage to, to wearing underpants i guess is if um you have to make a pit stop in the woods and you don't have anything else <laughs> or or you know you got to swap out gear all the time and you're at a race station you want to swap out your shorts or whatever you have your underwear underneath so you just right so it's not quite so that. shocking yeah it's like <laughs> put the shorts back on there's a bear out here put it <laughs> oh bear um yeah i mean i think that's pretty much it i mean you know again thank god we don't live someplace where you have to wear you know like crampons and things like that on your shoes to get through the ice and snow and yeah no thanks i'm not running in that i'm sorry no sorry no no me neither um so uh any races or anything coming down the pike for you nah and uh basically all the races i would even think of doing are the same saturday as my robotics competitions right now so oh that's too bad. so i'm pretty much like mesquite fire and everything is going to be i have a meet i have a robotics oh. meet Dude. so you got i think you got all kinds of races going on next weekend uh um, well yeah and, and also Next weekend, the 26th is the, the weekend. Mesquite, yeah. Mesquite Fire and something else. Tejas Trails has something, I think, going on that same day. Is it J&J? &J? No, J&J is the follow, uh, two weeks from that because I'm, I'm going to be up there working the aid station mm. finish line or something. Um, something else going on that same weekend, I think. Oh, maybe Jackalope Jam. Oh, yeah, Jackalope right. Jam. And that's like pretty cool because by time, so how many miles can you get by time is pretty cool event. Yeah. But yeah, I'm going to be indoors with the robots and <laughs> and uh, that's going to happen hopefully through April. And, cool. uh, and, th and then after that, well, then we'll see. But I'm really not really running right now. Just hitting the gym, trying to. Good. I talked to uh, Coach Basilio yeah. uh, the other day and just shooting around some ideas. And he's like, no, man, you need to take basically a whole month off. 
Uh, and you're like, of course, <laughs> because you can't, uh, you know, and I respect his, his coaching and his, his format and how he handles runners. And he's like, you can't start a new training cycle. If you're still, uh, what did he say? If you're either injured or coming off injury or just uh, coming off something. Yeah. Day. Yeah. He's like, no, you need to just like, yeah, let I would the body rest and heal, but then you can start a training mm -hmm. cycle. Yeah. Okay. So he's like more or less a month. I said, well, it's already been a month, but I had that lingering injury. So yeah, I wouldn't push it. Yeah. So, yeah. well, and I think going to the gym is useful. So how's the diet going? Well, I've been, <laughs> I've been eating uh, uh, meal preps for lunch. There's a oh, company down here, health, health, uh, health meal preps, mm -hmm. pretty good. And the calories are real low. So that's why I'm always hungry afternoon. Cause it's like only like 400 calories for a lunch. <laughs> and then I have, and then I'm eating lunch like at 11. Right. Okay. So, it's like breakfast. <laughs> yeah. Then I have like classes all after that. Right. So I'm super busy all afternoon and then I'm getting hungry. And so that's been a little bit of a challenge not to get home and pig out in the evening <laughs> or drive through. <laughs> yeah. Or pick up something bad to eat. Yeah. Well, that's good. Sounds like it's going well. Yeah, and they deliver and everything to my house, so I, I just oh order them online, and like today, they'll come, and they have a wide menu and pretty good. Yeah. Is it expensive? Uh, what am I paying? $8 per meal? That's reasonable. It's, it's pretty good stuff. Good. Pretty good stuff. Uh, what else? Oh, shameless plug. Ugo Yomi. Fleet Feet McCallan's open. Oh, uh, so, so Kathy and I went by yesterday. How is it? Checked it out. Pretty good. They have that iFit system. Oh yeah, I like that. Yeah. Uh, and lo and behold, they'll email you your results too. So you get an email with uh, with the measurement stuff. Yeah. I haven't gotten the video, but the video was pretty cool. Yeah. You, you know, you walk back and forth on your trackpad, and it tells you where you're putting your pressure on. Mm -hmm. So very interesting results for me. Uh, of course, where I'm putting pressure, that's where I get my blisters. Oh, well, that's no Go surprise. Figure. No <laughs> surprise there. But yeah, they have all, all the cool brands uh, for shoes. They had uh, all kinds of stuff in there. They have the junk headbands and stuff like that, which are pretty oh. good. They got UFOs, recoveries. Uh, oh. So you got, I mean, they got all the brands that that are, you know, high-powered stuff. Mm -hmm. They have... Uh, gooders oh nice yeah but i think they I all, hmm. but they also have tifosi uh shades oh. which are also really nice and really? they're same about the same price 25 oh that's so, good so i mean they're uh they picked a good wide selection of products uh for all the runners out there that's so good. ugo and sandra gutierrez Fleet McAllen. awesome so happy for them you know this is something they've been wanting to do and and they're they're moving and it's a pretty awesome place to go check out. Yeah, I think I will when I'm down there because uh, yeah. I know they're a sponsor for Mesquite Fire also. Um, I think Packet Pickup may be there. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but and yeah, the, it's, oh, I'm sorry. And of course, we still have Valley Running Company, yeah. Garth McCallan. The original. Uh, the original uh, <laughs> the Valley Running store there. Yeah. So old school with Herman Medrazo. So, you know, he's helped me a lot personally oh, with yeah. my running. So I got to give him a shout out. Valley Running Company, and they also carry a wide array of products as well. So you got South McCallum place to shop, North McCallum place to shop. It's all good. Uh, you know, we're really trying to increase the running community here in Hidalgo County. So we got all bases covered. Yeah. Pretty cool. Well, I mean, even in the time when I first moved there in what, like 04, you know, to what it is now, I mean, it's incredible. I mean, it's really incredible the growth of, you know, and we've talked about this, I don't know if we've talked about it on this, but, you know, it's just like every weekend, there's like some kind of race, if not several, you know, so, um, yeah. and I think that's, that's a really good thing, you know, and again, you know, to me, it was always striking because, you know, the Rio Grande Valley had been labeled, you know, one of the most obese places, you know, in the nation. And, you know, the truth of the matter is, is that, you know, we've got this, you know, great active community that's, you know, working to combat it. So I think, right. You know, I don't know. I, I always felt like that was very important to point out to people that just, 
pictured a bunch of you know fat <laughs> waddling people holding a taco or something. well the, the problem is the food down here is just so darn good i mean what are you gonna I do know. yeah uh, we got great food down here so it's easy to just eat well meat. and it's not like all healthy so. no no you can't there's, uh, there's no such thing as healthy mexican food no <laughs> it's it's so delicious but it's full of the bad stuff you know but uh Once you know it's delicious in moderation it's delicious and it's all around yeah so yeah it's uh it's hard to eat clean uh down it's here possible. it's possible it's possible it's doable i'm Just trying to resist temptation that's yeah, all maybe i'm not trying hard enough but i'm trying <laughs> <laughs> no it sounds like you're doing well i'm i'm, I'm uh, happy to I, hear that i don't know i'm afraid to step on the scale and see like no change <laughs> I usually just, I, I gotta be really honest. I just tend to go by how everything fits. Cause you know, sometimes if you step on the scale, it's like, what? <laughs> yeah. But if it's good, you're okay. So, um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so, all right. Well, any, anything else you want to throw in there before we wrap up? No, I think uh, we've kind of covered, covered it all. You're running in the cold, layer up, find out what works best for you. Yeah. Check the percentages of material in the clothing and find find the cheaper versions of that if you can if you're starting out and uh you know you'll figure out what works for you for sure sounds like a plan all right well listen thank you hundo uh -huh. uh, hang loose real quick all right well i hope you found that episode very useful and helpful um i did reach out to some of my friends uh from the san antonio roadrunners off-road group um because they're a lot braver than I am. Uh, they were out there yesterday when it was like in the twenties and, uh, it's like, hmm, no, I wait until it was much later and slightly warmer. Um, but I'm going to just, uh, <laughs> kind of, well, you know what, let's, Hey, let, woo, let's do this screen sharing thing, man. We can, we can do all kinds of stuff. Um, yeah, let's, let's screen share that thing. Um, so, <laughs> So my friend Robbie says that as long as his upper body and ears are covered, he's good. Uh, also, your body will warm up quick. Very true. And he also said, don't forget the running gloves. I've never really tried that. So that's a pretty good piece of advice. Um, Agatha, who is our coach, um, and she's like, use flat, full foot disposable warmers, but instead of putting them in your shoes, stick it in your, wow, stick it on your core and belly and then just pull it out when you warm up never thought about that one. Thank you, Agatha. That's, that's interesting. Um, I can tell you that I've run, um, the last loop of a 50 miler, which is probably about 17 miles with those things stuck in my shoes. And, uh, it, it's not especially pleasant, but you know, what are you going to do? Um, also, um, oh my, and you can also find that they sell full body warmers that come in a three pack and Walgreens has them right now. My gosh, the things you learn. Um, and also uh, Agatha has a very good piece of information here uh, for ultras, which is anything over 26.2. Um, change clothes when the sun sets. Boy, oh boy, is that true? Uh, including your sports bra, ladies. Um, yeah, because you don't want a soggy sports bra um, running in the cold of the evening. Um, and um, and she also mentioned that we often don't realize how, um, what our clothes get, you know, our running clothes get uh, in the cold weather and how much heat that, that can, you know, sap from you um, as you're running, you know, overnight. And, um, and fortunately, I haven't done too many of those, but I, yeah, from my limited experience, I can't agree with that or can agree with that. Um, uh, okay. And Carrie says that she wants uh, likes to cover her hands and ears when it dips below 50. I know, go ahead and laugh, but it's true. Um, other than that, I try to wear lots of wool, especially socks and shirts. So um, some pretty good advice from my uh, running crew. Thank you, SAR Off-Road Runners. And uh, yeah, I'll stop sharing now. And now you can see me again. Uh, so um, this coming weekend, this Saturday is my birthday. Um, and I am going to do, I'm not going to say attempt, I am going to do, it may take me a while, um, the 50K at Rocky Raccoon. Um, I think we're going to have better weather. Um, 
at least from the forecast instead of like this past weekend when they had the 100 mile 100k um i mean it was really brutal it was like in the mid 20s yesterday and i think like in the low 30s last night and i i there were i counted and this was as of this morning uh i think something like 36 dnfs for the 100k and there's still maybe more um and i counted over 100 dnfs for the 100 miler which i don't know if that's some sort of record or what but um i do think the cold weather you know kind of caught some people off guard um i do i have a friend that uh did drop because he was getting hypothermic he was doing the 100k and um and i totally get it i totally get it it's it's you know it, it's just a completely different animal um and Huntsville's very humid even when it's cold it's humid so um but I, I yeah I, I think they're calling for I think 70 degrees or something close to 70 degrees uh, as the high on Saturday I mean it's gonna be a little chilly in the morning because I'm starting at 6 30. um but I'm okay with that I mean just kind of follow my advice with the layering and stuff and then uh we've got two loops so I think I can probably you know shed some of the um heavier stuff or if I'm you know wearing an extra shirt or something like that get rid of that you know for the second loop you know when things warm up and the sun comes out hopefully um but yeah so and, and here again I am not trying to you know set any kind of you know personal record or you know anything because I really have not done a 50k in I mean for real for a good three years or so and um yeah, and I've not trained especially well, um, especially lately. Uh, it's just been cold, and I just haven't felt like running. And I, uh, I've been riding my my indoor bike, and I've been weight training, and you know, trying to cross train as best I can. So I mean, there's that. It's not like I'm sitting on the couch, you know, doing nothing. But um, yes, <laughs> so there's that. Um, and I will. My report next week will be about my experience at Rocky 50K, and. Um, you know, fortunately, it doesn't look like the weather will be what it was last year, which was the weekend before Snowmageddon and, uh, you know, where it was just in the 30s. It was really awful. And, you know, I spent most of the race just preoccupied with, you know, getting home and making, um, you know, arrangements for the my outdoor cat family uh, that I share with my neighbors and, uh, you know, because yeah, I just worry about that kind of stuff. I'm that kind of guy. Uh, yeah, really, outside of that, I don't think there's anything new that I've signed up for, thank God. Um, although my friend Vivian, who I talked to last week, um, uh, posted something on Facebook yesterday about um, a race in Utah. And um, I think at the end of May, I've never been to Utah and I have no idea. I mean, I'm sure there's mountains like altitude, it's west, you know. Um, but there's something called the Thelma and Louise race. And um, I'm thinking about that one. I'm thinking about that one. It'd be like one person's Thelma, the other one's Louise, and you run a half marathon. Well, you do a relay. I think that's how it works. So one person does a half marathon, then the partner finishes that marathon by doing a half marathon. And then your times are combined or whatever. So um I don't know if I want to be Thelma or Louise, but uh, I don't know. Yeah, it might be really expensive. Um, so I don't know. I have to kind of think about that one a little bit. Um, so, um, but yeah, I think that's all I've got for now. I will see you next time.